Tangeray, Tangeray, Tangeray. When this photo was taken, 10,000 men in New York City knew that name. My signature meant something to them. They'd line up around the block whenever I was dancing in Times Square, just so I could sign the cover of their nudie magazine. I'd always write, You were the best I ever had. Or some stupid shit like that. Something to make them smile for a second. Something to make them feel like they'd gotten to know me. Then they'd pay their 20 bucks and go sit in the dark and wait for the show to start. They'd roll up that magazine tight and think about their wives or their work or some other problems. Then they'd wait for the lights to come up. Wait for Tangeray to step out on that stage and take it all the way for 18 minutes. 18 minutes. That's how long you've got to hold them. For 18 minutes, you've got to make them forget that they're getting older and that they aren't where they want to be in life. And it's probably too late to do much about it. It's only 18 minutes. Not long at all. But there's a way to make it seem like forever. I always dance to the blues because it was funky. You don't have to move fast. You can really zero in on a guy so that it seems like you're dancing just for him. You look him right in the eyes, smile at him, (laughs) wink at him, put a finger in your mouth and lick it a little bit. Make sure you wear plenty of lip gloss so your lips are very, very shiny. If you're doing it right, You can make him think, wow, she's dancing just for me. You can make him think he's doing something to your insides. You can make him fall in love. Then, when the music stops, you step off the stage and beat it back to the dressing room. I grew up an hour outside of Albany. The neighborhood wasn't too nice, but it was better than the black neighborhood on Hill Street. Right now, the house looks like shit, but back then it was completely clean. And my job was to keep it that way. My mother would come home after work, run her hand along the dining room table. Then she'd look at the tip of her fingers. If she saw a speck of dust, she'd beat me with a belt. I hated that woman. The only thing I liked about her was her style. She just looked like the movie star, Lena Horne. And whenever she walked down the street, both men and women would stop and stare. There used to be a store in downtown Albany called Flaws. And in the 1940s, if you didn't buy your clothes from Flaws, you weren't affluent. My mother only shopped at Flaws. She bought the best of everything, silk blouses, 13 pairs of shoes, a hat for every day of the week. No matter how much I hated her, and I hated her, I always wanted to dress like her. My mother might have been the only black woman in the Capitol that wasn't working as a secretary. She was special assistant to the governor. I've always wondered how she rose that high, but I certainly have my guesses. She fit in so well with white society that she wanted nothing to do with anything black. She never acted black. She never talked black. She talked about blacks, but never talked black. She used to tell me that I'd be a lot prettier if she married somebody with lighter skin. All she cared about was appearances. The only time we spent together was when I took ballet. I was on point at six years old. They won't even let kids do that anymore. My mother came to all my lessons and danced right alongside of me. It was the only time we ever bonded, but she couldn't do point, not even close. My father was around, but that's about all he was. I don't remember him being happy or sad. He was just there. He worked at Montgomery Ward Furniture Factory, so his fingernails were always dirty. I made up my mind early that I'd never date a man with ugly hands. But he did dress well, I'll give him that. Thank you for listening to this clip provided to you by Macmillan Audio. 
To hear more, look for this title wherever audiobooks are sold.